I think a lot of you are probably not aware that Hydra Tasmania and Momentum Energy have a VPP product. So today I just wanted to share um, some of the cool things that we've been doing, um, some real life examples and learnings with you. So I wanted to go over four uh, case studies where we've actually been helping our customers uh, with our uh, product offering. Um, so it's a bit ambitious for 10 minutes, so I'll just only very quickly uh, introduce who we are. Um, so we are Australia's largest renewable uh, or generator of renewable energy, and we are 100% uh, Tasmanian government owned. Uh, Momentum Energy is our uh, retail arm, and we operate uh, across the mainland NEM, so not in, uh, not in Tas. And Insura is our engineering consultancy business. Um, and they've actually been helping us out on the VPP side with things like onboarding uh, very complicated customer sites or FCAS compliance issues that we've had to work through. Um, so it's great to have them uh, on uh, as, as part of our, our business. So in terms of our VPP offering, what, is it, what does it look like? Well, first of all, we are a business-focused uh, VPP. So we do not have any uh, residential customers on our VPP at this time. Uh, and just like Momentum Energy, we, we focus on the mainland NEM. So we don't focus on uh, Tasmania at the moment. Essentially, we help generate uh, revenues for our clients with our VP offering. So we take their controllable asset, you know, their battery or, or their controllable load. Uh, we trade them into the available markets, such as FCAS or the spot markets. And then we share the vast majority of those revenues with our customers. I think a key point is we can be a retailer agnostic. So we can, we can offer our VPP product to anyone, uh, regardless if they're with another retailer. However, there are some benefits if you are with Momentum, and I'll, I'll go into those details in just a minute. So we, are, we were part of a EMOS VPP demonstration program. It feels like a long time ago now, I think four or three years ago. Uh, and as part of that program, we, we bid a uh, portfolio of business battery assets uh, into the FCAS markets. We have built our VPP in-house. Uh, as well as our AI capabilities, although we have worked very closely with a leading university in Melbourne to, to help build out our AI forecasting capabilities. Uh, and we can control lots of different asset types. So on top of the ones that I'll cover today, we've also onboarded an EV charging station, uh, as well as a biodiesel uh, generator, a few of those. And we can partner with third parties. So this is really quite key. So we don't sell or install batteries where we can work with EPCs. Uh, we don't own our batteries or, or our assets that we that we control, so we can work with finance partners. Uh, we don't uh, integrate the direct integration into the assets either, so we work with different integration uh, partners, and some might be a little bit better at, at integrating into certain assets than others. Um, and we can work with lots of different OEMs, so I think there's a lot of different battery manufacturers out here uh, this week, so we, yeah, we can work with a lot of those. Now let's get into the, um, the case studies. So this, this first customer is an example of a controllable load. And this customer is with uh, Momentum Energy on a fixed price retail contract. So this is just a 24 hour snapshot of a pretty eventful day. So starting off at, at midnight, you can see the, the load is just sort of chugging along. Uh, it's just over one, one megawatt, just, over, just under 1.1 megawatt. Uh, and we would have been bidding this, this capacity into all rays contingency FCAS markets, including uh, the very fast FCAS market. Um, but we obviously are co-optimizing this uh, against the spot market as well. So you can see this, this pretty high uh, spike in wholesale electricity prices, uh, and we dropped that load. Now, I mentioned this customer is with Momentum Energy on a fixed price retail contract, so they're not actually exposed to these prices. Uh, but because they are with Momentum on a retail contract and on our VPP, we can drop their load and just share the upside of that um, load drop with them. So we just we just pay them that value um, or the vast majority of it. Uh, and that's what we've done here. So we would have um, obviously that load would have recovered and we did the same thing uh, during that evening, uh, during that evening peak as well. So and obviously bidding FCAS uh, around those times. So this is this is actually about a $50,000 uh, value of, of on the spot markets alone on the gross value. Uh, that's on, on top of any, so there's any additional FCAS payments would be on top of that. Uh, and this is just a one megawatt controllable load. So uh, really excited about this, this concept and really any, any load could, could work with this as long as, as long as obviously we can drop it very quickly. Uh, this next case study is a behind to meter uh, battery. It's all about value stacking. So because this customer is with Momentum Energy as a retailer, this, this battery is behind the meter and it's optimizing by charging off excess solar and discharging to cover that load. 
So you can see that happen here. Um, it's just the battery is discharging to cover that load. In the morning, uh, there's a high spot price event and you would have seen us discharge that battery. After that event, we let the battery charge off that excess solar. And during the evening peak, again, we've discharged that at uh, as much as we can uh, to cover and, and grab that value. So what are some learnings here? Uh, I think the first one is, if you look closely, you can see that the battery discharge is a bit less in the morning than it was during the uh, afternoon peak. And the reason for that is that there's solar that, that's ramping up here. So we want to actually discharge that battery as much as we can, but without curtailing any of the solar, because then we would be just shooting ourselves in the, in the foot. So we need to consider these export limits and need to make sure that there's a little bit of headroom for the solar to actually keep ramping up uh, without getting um, sort of blocked by the, the dispatching that we're doing. Um, a lot of our customer sites have, have export limits. Um, and another key key learning here is just the, the challenge around settlements. So to, to share the value with our customers, because they're on that, that fixed price retail contract, we need to know what the battery would have done had we not intervened. So to, to do this, we actually calculate something that we call the counterfactual uh, battery power, which is basically a calculation of what that battery would have done had we not intervened. So the difference between what the battery would have not done had we not intervened and what it did end up doing because we did send a dispatch command. So basically the area underneath or between these two curves, um, we multiply that by the spot price uh, and that's the gross value that we've generated. And it, it might seem really simple, right? Just sort of, you know, draw a line here and, and there, but it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty tricky because you actually need to consider the, the counterfactual state of charge as well. Because as you can tell, the battery would have actually been full a little bit earlier had we not intervened. Um, and, and that just leads to all sorts of challenges where, you know, what if you're pre-charging the night before a, a morning peak or, you know, there's energy losses that you need to consider there. So it, it's actually, it's, it's pretty tricky. So this is a 290 kilowatt battery and we generated uh, about three and a half grand in gross value for um, the customer on this one, one day. Um, and and it's, it's part of a larger portfolio. Now, this next uh, example is, a, is an example where the, um, the battery is uh, actually not with, or the customer is not with Momentum Energy as a retailer. So this battery is sitting behind a, a child NIMI and it's uh, directly exposed to spot pricing. So it's really important for us to really grab and charge uh, right when prices are lowest and obviously discharge when prices are highest. Um, you can see that over here. So the battery is charging when it's going underneath this, this line and discharging over there. And you can see we're pretty much grabbing, you know, pretty much perfectly all these little troughs. So I definitely didn't cherry pick this, this particular day, but you know, we certainly discharged it uh, at the right times as well. But I think a key learning here is just the importance of, of forecasting and, and our abilities to forecast well, because our VPP would have made the decision not to keep charging here, uh, but to wait two hours to grab this little trough here um, to just get that extra value for our customer. Um, so this is a pretty boring day. I think you can see prices are really only fluctuating between $20 and $320. Uh, but yeah, even on those days, we need to maximize that, that value, of course. So this is our, our last case study. Uh, this is an air conditioning control uh, example. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool project. So you can see, again, just, just a 24-hour snapshot. Uh, the load is sort of the air conditioner is ramping up when it, as it heats up. And we had four or five pretty uh, chunky price events up to $15,000 during the evening peak. And so the, the, the air cool load was, was dropped uh, pretty rapidly. Um, and yeah, we were able to generate about $1,000 uh, for this pretty small air con unit. It's only about 200 kilowatts uh, during this day. Um, some of the, the learnings on, on this project are uh, yeah, the comfort level. So we, we've actually built a virtual red button that the customer can push at any time uh, in, in case there are any thermal uh, comfort issues or, or any just in case they're not happy with what we're doing. Uh, and we've been doing this for over a year, including last night, and they've never, um, never once felt the need to press that button. So it just shows how we're able to generate value. Um, you know, pretty much, you know, without impacting their, uh, the customer uh, in any way. So, um, yeah, keen to scale this. Um, the other challenge uh, and, and learning on this project was just the, the settlement challenge again. So we really need to develop a counterfactual, you know, aircon load, uh, which we've done because what happens is, you know, you can imagine if it's a hot day, you switch off your air conditioner for an hour or so. Obviously, that temperature might rise a little bit and your air conditioner might run at a higher capacity after the event than it would have uh, before. 
And you can actually see, in the, see that in the graph. So you can clearly see this overshoot. Now in this example, it's not really an issue because the spot price wasn't super high at that time. Uh, but sometimes we have you know two or three hour um, high spot price events. Uh, and it's something you really need to consider. So we've looked into lots of different methodologies in, on how to do that, heating degree days and, and different um, standards out of California. And but we've developed our own um, our own methodology and it, it works really well. Uh, and lastly, this is my final slide. So I'm very excited to announce that we received uh, funding from Arena uh, as part of their community battery round. Uh, and as part of that, we will be onboarding uh, 39 batteries. I think this is the first time we're going public with, with this information. So it's pretty cool. Just under 12 megawatt of capacity. And we will uh, not own any of these batteries. So our customers are, are, are purchasing these with Arena funding. Um, but we will onboard them all onto our VPP, trade them into all eight uh, contingency FCAS markets, trade them on the spot markets. And also we will do some innovative uh, energy sharing uh, with our Venn product, which is one of Momentum Energy's energy solutions products. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it for me.